I just wanted to share something that I made a little while ago for a game in RPG Maker MV. It's basically a partially working reconstruction of Windows 95 uh, in the engine. It's basically just uh, inspired by old uh, point-and-click adventure games like Beneath the Steel Sky, where you could get into terminals and get into the link-like internet um, and basically interact with stuff and then pop out to the main game. And I always thought that was pretty cool. It'd be fun to recreate in RPG Maker. So I gave it a go. I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm still working on it, tinkering with things. But I'll just show basically how it works, um, like functionally, and then afterwards we can go into details with the... Uh, if anyone's interested, just keep watching and I'll uh, go through some of the events and scripting and stuff and how it actually works in the engine. So first of all, I'll just get this running. This is for a Australian uh, political satire game. So I'll just load from a save where we come into the computer. Just uh, skip this dialogue. And there's our computer. The joke here is that the Liberal Party in Australia is kind of technologically illiterate and uh, useless. But we can just interact with this now. We can use it with the mouse or with the uh, keyboards. Fine. We got a nice Windows 95 startup sound. And here we go. I'll just move actual mouse out of the way. So our character sprite's been replaced with a mouse cursor. If we just mouse over this recycling bin, that's just a bit of dialogue. It doesn't actually work though. And if we mouse over the internet, we have a bit more dialogue. Okay, we've also got a, a start button. There's nothing there except the uh, shutdown because I just haven't bothered with anything else there yet. Uh, if we open up the internet, we can... Oh, that's right. First time uh, running the internet, it's gonna, it's gonna dial. I forgot about that. Just give it a second. Okay, there we go. And this is our internet browser, it's just Microsoft Internet Explorer. These buttons don't actually work, but uh, the idea of the game is that you kind of argue with people on the internet, or at least this section of the game. So we can say, do we want to argue with people on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, we can say yes or no. And if we say yes, basically it'll run a script that will come up with a random enemy to uh, have an argument with. We can close that for now. Uh, we've got an inbox here. If we open that, we can see we've got a red dot there as well, telling us we have mail to open and as soon as I click on this that red dot should disappear. There we go. Uh, so we've got an email from George Brandis. If we go back to the e inbox now we can see that that's now red. That's good. We can't fiddle with any of those buttons just there. Then there's spam. So it's a, a joke about those those old Clinton emails. And uh, spam from me. So this is just uh, some info here. Now some of these buttons will kind of do things now. So if I say to forward this, it just says, you know, go tell people about it. it, doesn't actually do anything. But these ones actually do. So we can click reply and it'll actually open up my, uh, whatever your uh, email client is. And basically it's just pre-filled to uh, the uh, address. And this could also be pre-filled with information like a subject and some body text as well if I wanted to. But there's nothing there. Um, the reply all does the same thing, and these links also work. So if we click on the website here, it's going to open up Google Chrome, open up that website. Uh, same deal if we click on that one. Facebook link goes to the Facebook page. Also works. Internet's a little bit slow, but that's fine. YouTube link. And Patreon. So all of those links work, and they will basically uh, open up Google Chrome in this case, or whatever your default browser is. And that's how they work, that's fine. We can open up my computer as well. The only thing that kind of works in here is uh, just backgrounds. So I can change these. You can see as well this font, I, uh, I actually just typed that using the uh, Microsoft font. So if we go to like Inbox or uh, the internet, you can see that it's got that cool Microsoft font, but I kind of kind of skimped on the my computer, I couldn't be bothered, <laughs> it's taking too long kind of drawing out these uh, letters. But we can change the uh, background there, we can close that, we can see as well, so it's 9.16am there, if we shut this down, 
We're good. Now, taking a bath in this game runs the day-night cycle. And the weather cycle as well, so actually it could be... Oh no, it also makes coffee go cold. Oh, it's raining as well, so that's nice. So there's a nice uh, little weather cycle in this game, which I'm also pretty happy with. And we can run this, open this computer up at night. It still plays that sound. It tints the screen back to normal. Our backdrop's been saved. Um, it's now 9.16 p.m. <laughs> I uh, don't have a full kind of time uh, cycle running on this, but, you know, a.m. p.m., that's pretty basic works. Again, we don't have any, any new emails yet. I could set it up to... Uh, for new emails to arrive every however many days, every however many uh, minutes of playtime or anything like that, or emails that arrive basically based on events in the game. So someone could say, oh, I sent you this email. You go back, open up your computer. There'll be a red dot there saying you've got new mail and so on. But basically that's how much this functions at the moment. Oh, that's a bit stuck there. That might happen because I'm a uh, clicking on it while it's already open. Getting these buttons to work was a little bit of a, a challenge, but it works. And so, just to show again how this would work, like, the internet so we can get into then arguments, so this is a Patriot Mama. And now we're back with uh, our characters. If I just try to get away from there, it basically just takes us back to here. If we open the menu from here, we still have all of our characters are all the same, and if I save from here, let's make a new save, it still shows our character sprites there rather than that uh, mouse pointer. So it all works well. The mouse pointer is kind of just a uh, aesthetic thing. And we can shut it down. And I'll close this now. Oh, and the screen tints back to nighttime. Just to show basically now how this is all working, just really quickly. As we walk in here, this is just the event that uh, says if the uh, quest has started that gives you this computer, this event will run. Uh, that sets the unread emails to one because that's the first email we're going to get. And then if we open the computer, or if we turn it on, we just save the background music, that, that fades out, we play the sound effect for Windows 95 starting up, we wait the time it takes for that to start up, we transfer to the Windows environment, we changed the player speed to 5. Uh, I just did that because I wanted to disable dashing uh, just to make it a kind of smoother, kind of classic uh, Windows environment rather than kind of messing with things too much. So I just sped up the character and disabled dashing. So it's basically the same as putting always dash on. And then there's a control switch basically just telling us that Windows is on and the, the music comes back on. That's that entire event. That's all it does. Once we get to the Windows environment, there's an event that runs every single time we get to this uh, map, essentially. Uh, it tints the screen so that if it's nighttime, it'll be bright, which is good. We turn player followers off so that we don't have players following the mouse cursor around. And then we use a set movement root uh, event uh, input here just to change the image to the mouse cursor. So we're gonna use this cursor and you can see it's lined up so that it's the cursor tip is kind of right in the middle of that square. And I try to line up everything in the map so that that fits. Speed five again, that's kind of doubled up and unnecessary. Plug in command, disable dashing. Also that's doubled up because we can just disable dashing here. So you can see that's disabled already on the map. Uh, done that twice. And then basically there's a whole lot of uh, conditionals that run here one after another. Uh, and that's basically going to set the background based on what we've decided there. Then this event just erases so that it will run every single time we open Windows. And the way the backgrounds work is that actually the tile set doesn't include that background. So this is a parallax background here and we have up the text so we can't move the icons around as well. That would be impossible using the keyboard well, it wouldn't be impossible, but it would be difficult using the keyboard because we can't really drag stuff. Um, and also that's too fiddly. But we basically just have the text, we've got the bar down the bottom, and our backgrounds, and they all just sit here as images. Okay. And then down here for our start button, it basically has two ways. So if it's on or off, if we hit it, it just makes the cursor sound. It goes in, so we have Windows Start button on. If 
Windows Start button is on, it changes the image to this image. It plays another cursor sound, so it's the click on, click off, and then it just goes off again. So it immediately goes off. Um, or rather, if you hit it again, it'll go off. So it stays in, and when it's in, so Windows Start button is on, that makes this come up. Um, so if Windows Start is on, the shutdown image bar appears. Now this is basically, all of these events are exactly the same, but just with different images here. And these images are just coming from our tile set, which is just the tile set I put together in uh, Paint Shop Pro 9. So this is basically the whole tile set, that's all of the stuff we've got there. Um, I thought that was kind of fun as well, because we can make, essentially instead of making a map with uh, rooms and so on, we've got a map that's a, a Windows environment with uh, just windows on it, and buttons and icons and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, so this button will come up if the window start is on. Um, and if we then hit this button, it fades out the screen, turns the followers back on, uh, depending on which, uh, uh, what the player is wearing, it'll change their uh, actor image. I think this is actually unnecessary. I don't remember putting this in. I think I kind of sorted that out um, somewhere else. But basically, it's like if they are on, it would be uh, this image. Uh, so that's if he's wearing his budgie smugglers. If not, it changes to this image. But that would actually happen anyway, I think. Uh, I think that's now unnecessary. I kind of have a different script that runs that. And it just takes us back to the house. It enables dashing again fades the screen, so all of this just happens while the screen's faded out, just for the sake of uh, running things smoothly. Uh, it turns Windows 95 Start off, which is the Start button, so it turns this event, or this uh, switch back off, and then it just says that Windows is off now as well. Okay, so that's the turning on and off. This, I think, is just always the same, I just have that there as a, an event, and then the AM, PM, basically, it's if it's night time, it's going to be PM. If it's daytime it'll be a.m. and I think I just left it like that because it doesn't quite line up perfectly I could shift it a little bit probably yeah it'd be easy to shift but I haven't bothered with that the recycle bin doesn't do anything basically the first time you mouse over it so play a touch it runs this bit of dialogue self switches then it's turned off doesn't do anything else anymore my computer to get these buttons to run basically we have the image here so that just runs from the tile set action button, if we hit it, it plays the cursor sound, it switches on, which then just, all that does is changes the image to, uh, to here, so self switch A, so self switch A, it runs this event, this is an auto run, it waits 30 frames, turns off, opens the, uh, the my computer map, basically, scene. And so that just means that this uh, image occurs for 30 frames, so that's half a second, and then goes back, so it's the going from like this, basically switching between those two images, and transferring us to the My Computer map, and it takes us, like it'll just transfer the player, so the mouse cursor is back over here. These buttons, okay, so some of them just don't do anything, if we hit this one it just takes the player back to Windows, and any of these basically will play the sound again, wait a couple of frames, and then they change the Windows background to whatever the uh, uh, variable is. They change it there as well, and the reason we have a variable there is so that when we close the computer and open it back up again, it has saved the background. That's all that does. The inbox uh, runs pretty much the same way, so if we're at Windows, if we hit this one, it's going to control switch on, Curses on, it goes to self switch A, does the same thing, waits 30 seconds, and then transfers the player. If unread emails is one or greater, it's just gonna, the only difference is that image is different. And then, for example, if we go to the inbox, if we open this anywhere where it is, it is going to wait uh, 10 frames and transfer us to the email map, uh, reduces the unread emails by one tells us this is open, which then changes this image to being an open uh, letter image, basically. Uh, these buttons don't do anything here, I don't think. Yet yeah, we don't, we can't send emails. The spam button will take us to the spam folder. 
And the only other kind of interesting stuff is just on this one, where basically I had this, yeah, running plugin commands originally. These actually don't do anything anymore because the plugin, it's a Yanfly um, uh, kind of hyperlink plugin. I can't remember when it stopped working for me. I've probably just fiddled with stuff too much, but now I just use script calls that just use a classic window open to basically just opens your email client mail to this person. There's no subject and no uh, body text, but we could easily put stuff in there if we wanted to. The, uh, I think that, so that's that. That one does the same thing. The forward just opens up dialogue. The website links, same thing. So it just runs a script that will open the default browser to the uh, website. And so we just have the the website address there, and all of those do the same thing. So it just opens to the website, and these images are just from the, the uh, tile set again. I think that's about it. I don't think there's anything else on here. I uh, one thing to get more emails running is to basically these events would have to move down um, as they go, and I also want to have something in there that can delete events. I think that'd be quite cool. Moving stuff to the recycle bin, putting some more stuff in the uh, start menu would be quite cool. And because the start menu is uh, running from events, it's quite easy to get that to overlay. Could also do this using pictures uh, coming up. So we've got parallax backgrounds doing the backgrounds for us, which is really helpful. We could also use pictures um, and then basically put events on them just uh, because as well this uh, map is exactly the size that we have set up for the game. It uh, There's no scrolling or anything, so I don't need to worry about that. And so it'll be quite easy to set up pictures and have essentially buttons running on those. The only other thing that was uh, slightly tricky is that whenever we get to one of these three things here, we can immediately go, for example, from internet to uh, my computer. So if we're here, we hit my computer, it'll load that. But if we're on my computer and if we hit this again, I noticed there was a bug basically, not a bug, there was just a bit of sloppy scripting where it would try to open or transfer the playback to the same map. Um, so for the maps where we are on, I basically just had to uh, turn off the, that transfer player. So if we're at my computer and we hit the my computer icon, it does nothing. It basically, it turns the switch, it turns the cell switch on, it waits 30 frames, turns the cell switch back off automatically because that's on an auto run function. Um, or at least it should be. In fact, that explains why that was getting stuck before. That should be on auto run. So if we go to internet, for example, here, or parallel or other, let's put that on parallel just so that it doesn't slow us down. Although, Auto run a parallel doesn't really make a difference there because uh, it's only doing it for 30 frames. We can make it parallel, that's fine. And that's basically the Windows environment. I don't know what this one does. Oh, okay, this is... Uh... All right, so that just runs when we open up the My Computer scene. I think there's, yeah, there's nothing else that does anything there, but it's a pretty cool little fun addition. I think it was really fun making these tile sets and then essentially, you know, being able to get something like this and then say let's uh let's make a window and so we can get like uh some of these frames and basically start building up a window in uh, whatever way we want to i think i had to make a couple of uh of uh, tile sets yeah so some of these this one I put on a white background, just the emails, but they could easily be done with uh, pictures and then just basically putting those pictures underneath the uh, uh, player. But so many ways to do it. And uh, this is basically done with essentially no plugins uh, to get any of this to work. It's just events and scripts. So it's pretty easy. Um, kill, kill. That is all.